What is going on everybody? I just played a phenomenal game with a hundred percent accuracy and it has a checkmate so I'm throwing it up on the tube. E4, C5, and the Mangarini, A3. My opponent played D5 so I captured. He recaptured and I gained a tempo with a knight development move to C3. Normally the queen would go back to D8 but he threw in a check on E5. I didn't want to block in my light squared bishop or give him the chance to trade off queens, so I blocked the check with a bishop. He developed his light squared bishop, and I gained another tempo with my other knight developing to f3 this time. He brought the queen back to d6, and I opened up the ability to develop my dark squared bishop with d4. He captured, and here... I thought about capturing for a split second, but I thought, might as well get my knight out of danger and hit his queen to get another tempo, and this way I'm threatening to fork the king and rook on c7. He brought his queen back to d7, and I finished developing my minor pieces with bishop to f4, doubling up on c7. The only piece he could bring into the battle to defend c7 is the knight to a6. This was a daily match, so I had as much time to calculate as I wanted. I almost castled, but I saw the move pawn to d3, and that would basically force off a bunch of exchanges because my knight is jeopardized by the queen, and the pawn's attacking my bishop. And if he forced all the trades off, I basically lost all my advantage. So instead of castling, I developed my knight to e5, gaining a fourth tempo on the queen. So now he moves it to d5, icing up my g2 pawn, and then looking to muck up my whole king side. But I did some calculations. That takes two turns. One for the pawn, one for the rook with check. So I can bring the knight down to c3, hitting the queen, forcing him to move. And when he moves... That gives me time to bring my light squared bishop now to where the knight was with check. And the only two pieces that theoretically could block are the queen and the light squared bishop. He'd lose the queen, and the light squared bishop would have to block on d7, and the knight already covers that, so it would be a free piece for me. He captures the g2 pawn, and I do just that with bishop b5 check. He decides to sidestep, and this was all calculated. Since he can't just throw away a piece, now I can bring my queen into the action with capturing d4, check. Sidesteps his king again, and I had calculated out a forced checkmate, and I sat there and double, triple checked. It is starting with bishop to d7, check. If the bishop captures the bishop, we come in with the queen, and he's forced to the b8 square, and we can either finish him off with queen d8, checkmate, or knight to c6, double checkmate. That's if he captures the bishop. He ended up not capturing the bishop. He could have went right, which he didn't. If he did, then knight to f7 would be checkmate. King c7, then you have knight to c6, discovered check with the dark squared bishop. And the only move that they have to prolong it is moving the pawn to e5, it's forced. Capturing with the bishop doesn't work. You have to bring the other knight to b5 for checkmate. What happened in the game, though? is the king went to d8, and then we had knight to c6, double checkmate. This was definitely the longest game I had that was 100%, but I appreciate you guys following along, and hope that you guys can pull something like this soon. Catch you on the next video. Thanks.